This video is on some of the complications associated with ACL tears and the associated injuries. And in this one, we're going to look at the MRI appearance of second fractures. Uh, the video is actually taken from a webinar we ran with uh, Hitachi Medical Systems in Singapore. So this is the first portion. of it. So welcome, everybody. Um, we are going to talk about a couple of things today. We are going to look at um, some injuries associated with ACL tears. So not particularly ACL tears themselves, but uh, a couple of the things that can occur uh, in conjunction with ACL tears. And again, because of time, we're not going through all of them. We're only going to look at two of them. And um, let me just go on to a full screen here. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, Sagon fractures and also a particular type of meniscal tear called a Risberg rip. So we, we're going to start with Sagon fractures. And sorry, you'll have to excuse me. We have dogs in our house and um, they get very excited at this time of the evening because they want to go out for a walk. Um, so we're going to look at uh, Sagon fractures and what we're going to cover is, you know, basically what it is, you know, why does it occur? It's, it's always important to know the anatomy of these things and know because then it gives you a better understanding of what to look for. And we're going to look at what, where to look and then what it looks like on X-ray and MR. So if we start with some anatomy, um, we have two things that we need to look at. One is the iliotibial band, and the second is this region of the anterolateral ligament. So this is the ant anterolateral part of the knee. So a Sagon fracture basically occurs at the lateral tibial plateau. So on a plane x-ray, I'm sure most of you would have seen this we have a, the lateral tibial plateau, and there's a small flake fracture that arises from that lateral aspect. This is in conjunction with an ACL tear. And it's usually with these complete or, or very high-grade ACL, ACL tears. And where it occurs is not at the ITB insertion. So this is the iliotibial tibial band. This is an anterior slice. You can see the blue line here. And this is posterior to the ITB. So the location of the Sagon fracture is actually here. It's, at, it's posterior to the ITB insertion. So it's not a um, avulsion fracture of the iliotibial band. So the first thing is, where do you look? So you start with the ITB, work your way back, and look at the area posterior to the ITB. This is a, a really nice uh, dissection, came from the, just come from the Journal of Anatomy. Um, and this demonstrates this anterolateral ligament. So this is Gertie's tubercle where the iliotibial band attaches and posterior to that is where this anterolateral ligament will attach. And the Sagon fracture is related to an avulsion fracture of the attachment of this ligament. Now on MR, this ligament is hard to see. It's, it's basically, a, there, are, there are a lot of capsular structures there. So it's not that important on MR to try and find this ligament. I think what's more important is that you know where to look. Okay, so we're just gonna have a look at a normal scan. So the way to start, so when you look at the, um, at the knee, we, there are various compartments to look at, at the knee. So the anterolateral portion begins here. So here's the iliotibial band, we're starting anteriorly. This is the insertion onto Gertie's tubercle. And as you go back, the area where we're looking for a Sagon fracture is here. So it's posterior to the insertion. So here's the posterior margin of the ITB insertion. So we're looking for either bone marrow edema or a fracture in this region. So it's not at this anterior most portion of the, um, of, the, um, of the scan. Okay, so now what do we actually look for? So on x-ray, we've just had a look at it. We're looking for a small flake fracture that arises from the anterolateral aspect of the tibia in, in, the, um, in someone who's had trauma. And again, this is the same thing. So let's keep going. So what do we look for on MR? So on MR, fractures are a little bit harder to see, but we can look for two things. We can either look for fracture and bone marrow edema in the acute stage or they may be just bone marrow edema. Again, in the uh, context of having a, a high grade or a complete ACL tear. So again, if we look at this, this is going from, this is anterior, this is more posterior. The pink arrow here is the iliotibial band. 
couple of slices posterior to that is where we see this. This is a T1 weighted sequence. We've got reduced T1 signal, increased uh, PD fat sat signal. So this is bone marrow edema. So this is your clue to there being a Sagon fracture, the presence of bone marrow edema posterior to the ITB in the context of a ACL tear. The other thing also is that the bone fragment can be quite difficult to see. So this is all the same patient. Here's the bone fragment, ITB, normal bone marrow signal at the attachment site. Posterior to that, we have bone marrow edema. Knowing the x-ray, you can say, okay, well, this is the fracture line here, but it is difficult. It's not, it's not so easy because these fractures are often very small. The other appearance is that you will see maybe edema only. And if you see this, so again, as we said, the fractures can be incredibly small. They may not be a step. It may not be very displaced. So what you might see in the context of an acute ACL tear is just edema. So if you see edema only, but you're not seeing any of the other signs of a fracture that we've talked about, that is still good evidence of a Sagon type injury. Okay, so in this patient we've got, let's start anteriorly. So here's the iliotibial band. And as we go posteriorly, what we're seeing is that we see low signal where we're um, at the lateral tibial plateau. We have the black line of the cortex. Cortex is missing here. And then we have the cortex back again. This, is, this looks like the cortex that's displaced. So we've got another black line. So that looks like the, the, the cortical line of the fragment that has been displaced. But it's, it's hard to see the actual fragment itself. Let's keep going. And if we look at the PD, uh, this is a T2 fat set. Um, again, ITB, bone marrow edema, cortical line. We have a step in the cortex here. So here's the black line of the displaced cortical fragment. We've got a step in the cortex. Okay, so how would you report that? So basically what you'd say is that, you know, there's bone marrow edema, plus or minus a step in the cortex. Maybe you see the bone fragment. If you don't see the bone fragment, that's fine. Um, at the lateral tibial plateau posterior to the insertion of the ITB. And in keeping with the ACL, this is in keeping with a, a Sagon type fracture. So that's the, for the report, that would be a, a good way to actually report it. 